Dylan Cummings here for Rock Magazine, here with Steve Serial, like signing for RSV Landil. Uh, Steve, thank you very much for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. So, first of all, how are you? Oh, man, thank you for having me, first of all, Dylan. I uh, appreciate you. Um, man, everything's going well. You know, the numbers of COVID related in New York City are, you know, we have our micro clusters, but everyone in my orbit is, is safe and healthy, and that's about as good as we can ask for and you know i hope you are, are doing well and yours are, are staying safe and, and healthy as well yeah i'm good thanks and i, I suppose that in this time it's just important to stay safe and healthy that's the main thing um so Absolutely. we'll crack on with the uh, interview questions now so um first of all i suppose the million dollar question is um why did you move back to landill <laughs> Well, um, you know, Landale is a club that I'm very familiar with, and I have a great relationship with Nick and Andreas. Um, and then when I was looking over the landscape and, uh, you know, it just seems like I'm the best version of myself as an athlete when I'm able to train full time and play against the best competition in the world. And right now, all of that is happening in Europe. So um, I wasn't planning on coming back to Germany, but with Tokyo being delayed a year uh, gave me the opportunity to to come back. So everything, a lot of the pieces just started to fit together, and uh, I'm really looking forward to get back to Germany. Yeah, that's great, and it's certainly uh, for me personally, it's great to see you back in Europe playing for Landau. Thank you. Looking Thanks, forward brother. to that. Um, just are you able to give some clarity on when you'll actually be joining Landau in Wetzlar? Yeah, well, as of right now, it's it's very COVID related because with certain travel restrictions, um, going to and from Europe and to and from the States right now is not the easiest. So I know that I'm in constant contact with Nikolai and Andreas about when's the best time, when's the safest time to come over. Um, so that's a, still up in the air. Um, but I'm looking, I'm really looking to come over after the holidays um, I have some Team USA obligations before then, but uh, I really want to get out over there before Christmas. But we'll see. It's all COVID related. Okay, that's great. Thanks for uh, giving clarity on that. Uh, next question I've got for you is, um, how will the move back to Landil uh, benefit your game prior to Tokyo? Yeah, well, um, you know, the German league is full of amazing talent. And, you know, you're a professional athlete when you play over in Europe during the season. Um, and I'm really looking forward to not only being a part of the team at Londell and growing as a teammate and growing as a leader, but being in an environment where I can be the best version of myself as an athlete. I'm, I'm pushed. Uh, I, you know, every day in training by the Londell guys, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to that challenge once again. So, um, yeah, it, obviously it's it's all in the in the version of being the best athlete that I can be for Tokyo for for my team. Yeah, that's great to hear. And then obviously the team's changed a little bit since you've been there last four years ago. I mean, there's still a few faces that you'll recognize, but how do you intend to fit back into the team? Yeah, to be honest, um, you know, I don't really know how to answer that like you said I'm very familiar with the German guys and, and and ladies I'm very familiar with Brian obviously but like you said the the team has changed pretty significantly um you know I know of uh you know Simon and, and RP and and Ian and those guys obviously I've played against them for years on the national team circuit but um man I'm just looking to connect with those guys on a deeper level not being, not having to look at those guys as rivals and look at them as teammates. I'm really excited for that opportunity. So, um, yeah, you know what? I'm just excited to be a part of the team and looking forward to the new challenge. Awesome. And, you know, I know a lot of those guys quite, uh, personally and, you know, they're good guys. And, uh, yeah, I think you'll be a great fit for that. This new uh, Landell team. Um, next question I've got for you is, um, so, um how much do you think the German league has changed in the last four years? Obviously, with Turing's dominance, that's sort of been a big factor. But what other aspects of the league, as well as that, do you think has changed since you've been there last? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm sort of been out of the, 
out of the circle as I've been playing and training here in New York. Um, so to be honest, I don't have a lot of answers to that question either. Um, again, it, when you don't, I don't know much about the league. I know that, uh, you know, Joe Beswick has become one of the best scorers in the world. And obviously he was a teammate of mine and I'm really looking forward to, to seeing him and playing against him again. Um, obviously, you know, some of the, some of the teams like Trier and, and the perennial powerhouses are all still there. So, um, I'm, you know, looking forward to seeing everybody and playing against everybody again, but it's going to be a, a short learning curve because like you said, I don't have a lot of time to get adjusted to not only my teammates, but to the league as well. So, um, it's just a really cool and exciting opportunity and I can't wait to get over there. Yeah, and I'm sure it's going to be a, a great experience for you. Um, I, again, this might be another difficult question for you, but what new challenges do you think you'll face with the team? I know you've touched on some of them briefly already, but are there any more challenges that you think you'll face? You know, I think, uh, you know, one of the challenges I'll face is just figuring out ways to, to play with athletes and teammates that I'm not familiar with. Like you said, um. I've been the leader of Team USA for a number of years. I'm one of the leaders here in New York. And um, before I left Londale, I was one of the leaders. So I think it's going to be important for me to um, follow and to listen and to just make sure that I'm doing what I need to do in order for the team to be successful. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to not necessarily um, having all the answers right away. I'm, I'm just one of the players who... I pride myself on that, but with all this uncertainty, I just need to go out there and play. And it's, it's a, it, it's an exciting time for me as an athlete. Yeah. It seems like you thrive off the, the unknown uh, league that you, that you now re-entering. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you touched on that, you, you know, you want to play back in Europe, back for Lando to benefit your game prior to Tokyo. And, that, and that's hence the reason why you're, why you've left the next but just to briefly touch on your time with the Knicks, uh, what did you learn the most from the legendary Patrick Anderson? You know, I've, I've been playing this game for about 15 or 16 years. And from the very beginning, from my time on Team USA, Pat has been uh, a pretty big rival, you know, especially early in my career. Um, Canada was one, just one of those teams that we really struggled against. And Pat was a big reason why, alongside Joey. Pat makes things look so effortless and he makes things look so graceful on the court that people just think he's just extremely talented. But what I've learned over the last four years is that he's one of the hardest workers that I've ever seen on the court. He puts the time in day after day after day doing just the basic, basic drills that, you know, some of us high-performance athletes take for granted. And it's one of the reasons why he's one of the greats to have ever played. He, he works his ass off, and um, it's one of the things that I want to take away for the remainder of my career is knowing that a guy that talented is also working day in and day out. Um, so it's it's been a, a real privilege of mine to get to know him on a deeper level and not just look at him as a rival, but to call him a teammate and to call him a friend. Yeah, and I suppose it just goes to that saying, you know, the grind continues, you know, no matter how good you are, that it doesn't, you can't, you can't stop. You're right. Doing what you've learned from the beginning. So, You're yeah. right. And, uh, yeah, just to touch on that, you know, obviously fundamentals are, are a massive part of the game, and I don't think many people realise that. So how important is it, would you say, for, like, I don't know, a young player who's watching this to, like, really learn their fundamentals? Yeah, I mean, to any young player, you know, you see these incredibly talented people that play our sport, the Terry Bywaters, the Patrick Andersons, or the Matt Scotts, the people who are these athletic specimens, and they just make it look so easy. But they really do put the time and the work in behind the scenes when the camera isn't on them doing basic things like leaving your follow through out there on every single shot, doing chair skills each and every practice to make sure that your body and chair are ready to play at the highest level, doing basic like bounce spins and bounce stops. And just these basics, the, these players are so amazing because they do the basics better than most of the people in the world. And that's what makes them great. You see all like the flashing of like, you know, 
these amazing shots that Terry can hit or Pat can hit and just the athletic specimen that Matt is, but they work each and every day. And what I always try to tell the next generation is you better be willing to put the time and energy into the work that you're doing because the generation before you definitely has, and it's grown the sport to an amazing level. So now we're, as we pass the torch to the next generation, they better be willing to put in the work in as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, I couldn't agree with you more there. And like, like you say, like these flashy things that the guys like Terry and Matt and Pat do, they wouldn't be able to do it if they didn't have the fundamentals. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, just the last question about the next. So how do you think the styles of play will differ between Landil and the next? Yeah. Well, the gameplay is, is very different over in Europe that, you know, than it is here in the States. In the States, we have a much different season. Teams, we don't play as many games. We maybe only practice one or two times a week because a lot of the teams in the NWBA are recreational teams. Guys have jobs, guys have families, guys have other obligations. So basketball maybe takes a back seat. Whereas over in Europe, you know, athletes are expected to train daily. We go to team practice four or five days a week and then a game every weekend. Um, the level of game is just a little bit higher over in Europe, but that's just because the athletes get a chance to play more basketball. Um, so obviously I've learned a lot from playing with Pat and Dave and my, and my teammates here in the Knicks that I hope to bring over to Londell uh, for this season. Um, but I'm just excited to get out there and work and, and be able to train full time again. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, Next question I've got for you is um, you have, you've been coached by some great coaches over the years. Uh, some uh, some people, the coaches that come to mind are guys like such um, Mike Frogley, who's arguably the greatest coach of all time uh, when you got coached by him at Illinois. And then, uh, as you mentioned before, Nick Zeltinger. But the question I've got for you next is uh, what are you most looking forward to uh, whilst you uh, be coached by Janet Zeltinger? Yeah, I, you know, like you said, I've been lucky enough to be coached by some some really talented and, and really forward-thinking coaches. And, you know, I expect the same from Janet. I, I don't I know Janet personally, but I don't know her as a coach, and I'm looking forward to just learning from her. Each coach has pros and cons that they bring to the table, and they focus on different aspects of the game that they think is the most valuable. Um and I'm just excited to kind of get in the video room and get on the sideline with her and, and really to understand how she sees the game. Um, she was an unbelievable, uh, unbelievably talented player. One of, one of the best female players that we had in our sport for a while. And I'm sure that she's just as good as a coach. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to know that side of her. Yeah, that's good. And uh, like, yeah, She's very uh, highly thought of as a coach and as a player, obviously, uh, in the wheelchair basketball community. So it should be uh, should be really good for you. Now, I mentioned mm -hmm. uh, earlier on Mike Frogley and your time at Illinois. Tying into that, um, Brian Bell is another one of your Illinois teammates. Obviously, you play with him on the national team, but how excited are you to play with Brian at the club level again? Yeah, I think I've known Brian since he was like 13 or 14 years old. He, I, I tell people that Brian was my very first rival when we were both back from playing juniors. Uh, I remember trying to do tricks and, and shots at practice at juniors, thinking that Brian Bell was guarding me. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, he's become my teammate for the last decade. And I can't think of a player that I would rather have as a teammate. He's just the most unselfish, never rattled player that I've ever played with. Um, you know, getting a chance to play with, with a guy like that, not only as a person, but as an athlete, he's just so hardworking and he's uh, so talented. It's just, you know, sometimes I'm in awe of the players that I get a chance to play with and he's definitely on that list. So, uh, Bri, I can't wait to get, I get, can't wait to get there, man. I can't wait to train with you and um, just excited for the opportunity again. Yeah. And can you, can you maybe elaborate on some of the memories you had with Brian at Illinois? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I got, when I went to U of I, uh, you know, we, I think we finished third and fourth in the college division, the two years that I was there before Brian and that class came in. 
And then as soon as Brian came in, our whole dynamic as a team changed because the ceiling of our team was just raised so high because he's so incredibly talented. Um, and like I said, he's one of my favorite teammates, not only because of how talented he is on the court, but he's just willing to always do whatever the team needs. I've never heard him say, no, I don't want to do that. Or no, this isn't going to work for me. He's so incredibly unselfish. And that's the type of player that everybody dreams of playing with. Right. And, you know, I've gotten a chance to play with him in college and on team USA and now in Germany, um, you know, it's just a, a really cool aspect for me to be able to play with a, with a person like that. Yeah, that's great to hear. And, and Brian's uh, definitely uh, a great guy uh, on and off the court, a great father as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So another player I want to talk to you about is um, Tommy Bummer, who's uh, arguably the face of Landell. Now, obviously you've played with Tommy um, uh, both your times previously at Landell and you've sort of seen Tommy go up in the game. You almost played sort of like a big brother role to him. Uh, Orlando, certainly that's what it seems like to me from watching your games previously. Um, so obviously, you've been gone for for a few years. Tommy's developed into a world class player. I'll go on record as a journalist. I'm not really supposed to give my opinion, but I'll say Tommy is my favourite player of all time. Um, he's a great guy. So, how excited are you to play with Tommy again when he's sort of sort of grown up and developed into this world class player? Yeah, I mean, even when I first got to Londale and Tommy was uh, a rookie alongside myself, um, you know, you can see that he was just dripping with talent from the very beginning. Um, he just needed a lot of experience at playing at the highest level in order to become the player that he is and then in order to become the leader that he is. Um, I don't think it's a question that he's the face of Londale. I think he absolutely is the face of Londale and getting the chance to see him grow not only as a player but as a person over the last you know five six seven years uh has been really fun for me as his teammate and as his friend you know looking you know looking forward to this year um you know again it's like i am just really humbled that i have a chance to play with another amazing amazingly talented player and another genuinely great person um, it's one of the things that I love about Londale is that they bring over not just amazingly talented people, uh, not only amazingly talented athletes, but really amazing people as well. So, um, yeah, Tommy, just add Tommy to the list of reasons I'm really excited to get back to Londale. Yeah, and then um, I, we touched on it before, but Landell's roster is pretty, um, pretty loaded this season with the likes of yourself. We touched on Brian and Tommy. And we also earlier we spoke about guys like Sagar and Simon Brown and Mike Lawrence, those sort of guys. Is there anything specific from the from the guys we haven't talked about, uh, like a Sagar and uh, Mike Lawrence or uh, Simon Brown that you're specifically looking forward to work alongside? Is it or is it just everything in general? You know, I think I'm just really excited to not look at those guys as as competitors and as rivals, and I get a chance to you know, understand them as, as teammates and as people, you know, the wheelchair basketball community across the world is really small. And when, you know, you make a national team or you go to a Paralympics for the first time, you're just a, kind of a part of this little family that comes with a lot of respect and a lot of admiration for all the players that has have come before you. And like you said, those guys are on that list. You know, I've, I've only looked at them as competitors and, um, you know, I'm just excited for the opportunity to get to know them on a deeper level, similar to how I got to know Pat and David on my time here in New York. Um, that's why we play, right? It's not only to win championships. It's not only to win gold medals, but it's to grow your family a little bit each and every, each and every time you have a new teammate. So just, some, just again, um, cannot wait to get over there and cannot wait to call those guys teammates. That's great to hear. Um, and then th this is sort of my signature question. So, and it's a tough one. So sorry if I put you on the spot here, but um, if you could train with three players who you've never ever trained with before, and that this doesn't have to be specific to the German league, it can be worldwide. What three players would you choose and why? Yeah, you, uh, you did put me on the spot there. I will say. Um, three players that I've that I've never trained with previously. So I'm gonna stay 
I'm going to probably stay within our, within my generation. Cause those are the players that I, that I know best. Um, first off uh, is Sean Norris. He's the three pointer that when I was kind of up and coming, he was the one who was winning gold medals and he was the one who was leading Australia to always battle against the Canadians and Paralympic finals. And he was the guy that I always looked up to and always tried to mirror my game against, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, we, me and him are, are different players. We have different strengths, but he was the guy that I looked at as like, this is the three pointer that I want to be. Um, the other guy is Terry, you know, like I mentioned before, he just makes the game look so much fun. You know, like he's so talented and like the cool Instagram videos of him hitting shots from sitting down. He just like, it's just, he just makes it look like everything is so fun. And again, I, he's a guy that I only really know, um, you know, as a friend or as a competitor. And I would just love to be able to call him, you know, call him a teammate of mine. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's just so incredibly talented. And uh, to go the, to go another way, um, the, my, my favorite female athlete is Becca Murray. And, you know, I get a chance to watch her on Team USA all the time. You know, the, she's probably the best shooter to have ever played or one of the best shooters to have ever played our sport. She it looks like she's never phased. The moment is never too big for her. Um, and I would just love for that mentality to, to rub off of me in a little bit because, uh, you know, she's, she's just so successful and, and so unfazed. Um, so I think those without prepping, cause that was a hard question, but those are the first three people that come to mind for me. Yeah. And the, without a doubt, those are three great choices, three great players. Um, I'm glad you approve. Yeah. Um, final question I've got for you. And um, again, this might be a tricky one, but um, how will Steve Serio help bring success to Landell once again? You know, I think the best thing about Londell is that it never comes from from one player. It never comes from one person. You know, even looking back to, you know, the time when they were successful um, from the very beginning, they always had like Pat and Joey once they're there. Um, you know, when, when my time was there, we had, you know, really, really talented foreign players like me, Mikey and Joey, but they had, you know, some of the best German athletes too and, and Shaq and Tommy and Geisha so it's the best thing about Londell is that it's bigger than just one person it's bigger than just one athlete so my role is to bring my strengths to help the team and I'm going to do that in whatever way is possible and whatever the team needs um, and I think that collectively like with we put together all of our talents and all of our skills I think that we will be successful this season um, so it doesn't come down to just me. It comes down to me adding to an already very talented group and uh, a group of really amazing people as well. That's great to hear, Steve. And once again, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. I'm really, really excited for when you get back out to Europe. Hopefully I'll, I can um, come out and see a game once COVID has calmed down and finally get to meet you and interview you in person. I think that'd be great. Once again, um, thank you very much for your time. I, I appreciate it. Uh, is, uh, have you got any final thoughts? No, uh, you know, appreciate you having me. I'm, I'm always here for whatever you need. And I hope everybody watching is, is healthy and safe and, you know, trying to be their best versions of themselves during this time. So again, thanks for having me. All right, Steve. Well, once again, thank you very much. And please stay tuned to Roll for more exciting content coming up. Thank you very much.